Hi, you guys. This is being recorded, and I know a lot of you out there, I recognize many of your faces have heard this time and time again. But I say when you watch these webinars or go through this webinar with me, watch it again because some of the nuances will fly right by you. The second time through, it will all come together. Uh, hopefully, anyway, and, and it will help you remember some of the nuances of this strategy longer. You know, that's something uh, I learned in college was, you know, with my psychology degree. If you review the material very shortly afterwards, you will remember it longer. If you waited, to, you know, learn the material during the course of the semester and then waited to the end to go over those notes that you had written, you had to learn these things all over again. So uh, if you review it very shortly afterwards, then it will stick into your long-term memory. So uh, without further ado, this is the ratio call spread. And uh, we have to go over a couple of things real quick. I'll talk about myself for some of you newer faces out there. You may recognize me from mainstream media where I've talked about everything from economic to geopolitical and on top of that market analysis. Well, I do about the same thing, especially in my daily market commentaries, you guys, where I talk about every single trade I do on a daily basis, but I layer on top of it these option strategies and following my rules, staying mechanical with that in order to increase that yield in your portfolio. That's the best way to increase your yield in your portfolio, you guys, is to add or layer on option strategies. Especially, a lot of people are learning that right now with the bear market move that we've had. Uh, if you've been following along, even in just this course, uh, we have been very fortunate with the timing of all of our webinars and the market moves that have been happening. Uh, for the implementation of these strategies. So it's been quite nice. Uh, there's been times where I've struggled uh, to find uh, things that work out. This has been a very good market um, with uh, regards to these option courses that we're, or this option course that we're teaching right now. So uh, anyway, um, I started out trading in college with money I'd earned and trying to, like I said, get that psychology degree, right? Well, I decided to switch it over to finance. And uh, after graduating with that finance degree, I literally packed my bags uh, and moved to Chicago and started working on the floor as a runner, which is what you see down here. These guys are all runners and then jumped up into the pit and uh, continued my trading career. So, I, you know, in that over 25 years, I've traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, currencies, and options on all these products in just about all market conditions. One of the things I have stayed away from, I will, is FX trading, but I have traded some currency here and there, but not like a real specific on those uh, FX. Uh, there's the disclaimer. Basically, we're an educational company, you guys, and I'll be talking about some specific stocks in here and they may very well be in my portfolio. I am not here to give you guys investment advice. Everything should be considered general commentary. Um, uh, you know, I don't believe in that herd mentality where people are out there and saying, you know, you should do this against this uh, right now and go out there and do it. And, you know, you're, you would have been up 500 percent. No, I go through every day and just like what you guys are living through. Um, I'm living through that as well. The market moving down hurts my portfolio in some regards, but I'm staying mechanical. And that's what I'm trying to teach you guys how to do is this is real life. I talk about the wins. I talk about the losses and I talk about the scratches. And I probably talk about my losers in those daily market commentaries where I'm talking about all my trades more so than I'm talking about the winners because those winners, they come and go. They're easy. You're in and out. We're done. We don't even learn anything from those. But the losers, we can learn a lot from. So that's what I try to stay on top of uh, and give you guys peace of mind. Because at the end of the day, you know, options and, and trading, some people have trouble sleeping at night. And I think I show you great ways to implement these strategies and, and put the psychology behind why uh, these strategies are good in certain, certain situations so that you don't have that uh, that worry. You know, uh, they say people worry because they don't know what the outcome is. So the, the I try to uh, dispel a lot of those things by giving you ways to 
uh, think about these that are very practical and so you can um, really understand them as well. Uh, review makes it stick. Thank you, Haley. Appreciate that. Uh, all right. You can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's blog for some trading stuff that I'm doing and uh, some other snark and fun stuff. Our parent company at Pro Trader Strat is another Twitter handle you can follow where you can get all kinds of uh, market wisdom and, uh, and deals of, uh, that you can take advantage of. Also, Facebook at Pro Trader Strategies. We're throwing out a lot of content on there so you can uh, get quick access to that. You know, it obviously, especially while people are in quarantine, are probably on Facebook a lot more. I can't wait to see their numbers on, on how long people are staying on Facebook right now. So follow us because we're throwing out some content there. You'll get some of the daily market commentaries, give you a little bit of taste of what I'm doing on a daily basis. All right. So the ratio call spread um, or the call ratio spread, however, some people say it either way, it kind of, however it comes out of my mouth is usually how I say it. Well, we need to know what our market assumption is on something, right? And, you know, I've been doing this strategy uh, or this course on, you know, put implementing options into our portfolio. So whether or not it's to build that portfolio and, you know, if you've been along the ride here, well, we built out a portfolio, even if you didn't start with one, because one of the first things we were doing was starting to sell some puts and uh, lo and behold, uh, with that big market moves down, we got put some stock here and there, right? So I've been talking about that in the daily market commentaries. I've gotten long some stocks here and there, and I've been staying mechanical, selling some covered calls we did. We talked about the collar that you could do to uh, implement around that. Well, this ratio call spread is really another kind of form of doing a covered call spread, but you know, we're going to have a different market assumption in a sense. On the covered calls, you know, we're willing to peel off some of this. Well, this one, my market assumption or directional assumption is bullish, right? Neutral to bullish. Because with this strategy, what we're doing is we're adding a little bit more risk to a long call. And by adding a little bit more risk, it's selling a short call uh, at the same strike. So we're buying a call. And that's going to be about at the money and i'm getting a little ahead of myself here but we're going to be buying an at the money call and then selling two out of the money calls against that and we're going to be able to collect a credit well what does that do that's going to overall lower our cost basis on some of those stocks that we might already own and i'm going to pretty much be in the beginning talking about the stocks that i've acquired um and maybe wanting to trim some of that so doing you know, a, a short call will enable me to trim it. But I think that there's still some upside left in this move. All right. You now, tomorrow is going to be probably a day where we start to see some uh, of the weaker hands start to cover. Nobody wants to really ride uh, these nice winds that they've had over this course of this week into the weekend, possibly. So we could see a bit of a pullback. So a good opportunity to sell this strategy, because if it goes against me or, or if the market goes against my assumption, which is bullish or neutral, well, I'm going to be able to collect a credit for this strategy. So uh, it will help me lower the overall cost basis in that stock that I own, right? If I am right on my assumption and the market moves higher, well, I can capture more of that upside than just owning the stock, all right? And if it blows through the top, then I'm going to be able to collect the width of that credit. I can trim off some of my um, my underlying in there. And in my eyes, it would be a win-win, especially in this, one of the scenarios I've kind of already vetted for. Uh, market's closed tomorrow. Oh, JQ, you're right. You're right. It is closed tomorrow, which is probably why we got that big, or the, the sell-off from the highs today. Um, thank you for that. I guess I have tomorrow off. Today's Friday. You just shortened my week. JQ, see, you know, good to have you around. Glad you're here. Because I probably would have woken up early. <laughs> All right. So ratio call spread. Um, two by one call spread is another way it's known as or a front ratio spread. When I put this into think or swim, though, it's going to say it's a back ratio spread. A back ratio spread, though, you guys is a one on oh, my pen on there 
trying to draw with my cursor, making my pen here. Uh, a back ratio spread legitimately, you guys, is a one by two, which means you're uh, you're basically selling one call and then buying two, all right? So uh, one by two is really the back ratio spread. So you're trying to finance a couple of those calls with a uh, the two calls you're buying. This one, we're doing a two by one. So we're buying one call and then selling two calls against it. So we're creating a long call spread with an extra short call in there. Uh, is there a video with this webinar? Uh, is Are you guys seeing video? What I'm not sure, David, what do you mean? Will there be a video sent to you? I am recording this, yes. Yeah, so you should get a copy of the recording. Um, and one of those things where I say, watch this again, you could watch one of the other uh, ratio call spread webinars where I have a different angle on it maybe. Whereas this one, I'm kind of thinking, we already have a portfolio, right? We have a couple of stocks in there um, and we want to lower the overall cost basis on that stock we own. Because when you lower your overall cost basis, then it's basically like you're continuously uh, chopping away at what you paid for that underlying overall. So that's how when you go out to sell it, even if you sold it at the same, uh, you know, your short call was at the same place where you got into this. Well, you got to collect that credit. You actually made more money. It's not like if you were out there just buying stock and selling stock on a given basis and you bought the stock at, say, you know, 120 and it went all the way down to 110 and you just said, I want to out at 120, want to get back up there. Well, if the market comes back up and you had your limit order in there and you got clipped, well, you got in at 120, you got out at 120. You don't have to worry about commissions anymore. Um, but so you got a scratch there. Well, had you done this with puts and sold the puts at the 120 strike, you would have collected probably, let's just say, 30 cents or 40 cents. Well, you got to keep that despite the fact that you bought that stock at 120, you know, your cost basis on it was really uh, 119.60. So you got it a little bit cheaper. And then if you sold calls against it and collected another 20 or 40 cents or something, market came up, clipped you on your 120s. Well, yeah, you got a, got in and out for the same scratch, right? Because you got put that stock at 120, you got short the calls, so they got called away from you. Well, that was a scratch, but you got to keep those overall credits. That's still in your P&L of 80 cents, so you made money, all right? Um, and that's similar to this. Well, we've got the stock in our portfolio. We might be thinking, you know what? I want to trim some of my stock if it gets, you know, a lot higher. I, um, I'm a little bit neutral. I'm worried about the downside. I want to lower my overall cost basis. That would be the opportune time to implement something like that. And this is perfect for me right now in my portfolio. This is not a recommendation by ourselves, you know, the same old thing, you guys, the disclaimer. But I'm going to be talking about things in my portfolio. I'm not trying to get you guys to do the same thing as me. It's up to you guys to make your own decisions. But I have a scenario in my portfolio where I want to take advantage of. Um, so um I'm going to kind of be talking about that because it's a real life situation that we all go through. All right. So the front ratio spread, I already talked about this. We're going to be buying this at the money call. And the reason why it's at the money, you guys, is because the only way to build this strategy out by adding this risk, because we're selling two calls, right? We're selling two calls. Let me just make sure that's a little bit more clear um, at that at the same strike. We're adding more risk to this strategy. So a regular long call spread, right, where you buy a at the money call or just slightly out of the money call and then sell a further uh, out of the money call against it, you know, you do that for a debit, right? Well, with this one, we're doing the long call spread, right? We're buying one at the money or uh, and then sell it just slightly out of the money. It would be just slightly out of the money if you're considering that one. And then selling two further out of money calls or the same strike. Well, a normal call spread is buying one at the money, uh, selling a further out of the money call spread. And, you know, your assumption is bullish then, right? Because you have a debit paid. You need to be a lot more bullish than you are with this strategy because 
We're adding more risk to it by selling that call, you guys. Make sure you are doing this spread for a credit. We need a credit. I mean, if there's nothing you take away from this, if you are ever building out the ratio call spread, you absolutely need to do it for a credit. If you're adding more risk to this trade, you need to be paid for it, all right? If you're adding risk, you need more reward, all right? So you can build this strategy out. And as a matter of fact, you can go online and get free education, you guys, and do a ratio call spread or whatever they're gonna call it, where you're buying one and then selling two and they can build it out and it would be a debit. That is absolutely something that blows my mind. I mean, literally my brain is on the wall behind me when I see that stuff, I get so angry because you're adding risk, you should be paid for it, all right? Don't do it for a debit because you have more risk to the upside than you would had you done it with a uh, just a long call spread. So this strategy assumes you own the stock like a covered call. It does, you can do this strategy as just, um, as a play, okay, James? Uh, in this, because we're doing it, uh, this course on, basically implementing these strategies around a portfolio in a sense, I kind of want to stick to that. So give people the thought process of, I've got this stock in my portfolio and how can, how can, I, how can I trade around it without necessarily you know, messing everything up, lower my overall cost basis, which I think is seriously uh, underappreciated in um, most portfolios. Most portfolios, people go out there and they buy stock and they put it in there for the long term. But what happens when we have like little corrections and stuff like that? There's opportunities, all, there's always opportunities in the market to take advantage of corrections and things like that. And that's when we wanna be lowering that cost basis of our portfolio. That's the only way in a, like a basic portfolio to increase that overall yield. You can't normally beat uh, the, the ETFs, you know, like just having SPY in there. It's very difficult to outperform the indexes unless you're using options. If you're using options, then you, you definitely can because for one, your return on investment is much better because of the leveraging aspect of it. You know, when you're using options, if you were to go out and buy a stock or do a synthetic long stock, then you know your return on investment on a synthetic long stock is much better than that of just the stock. So, uh, but with this, what we're trying to do is, you know, if if I bought my stock at 100, but I was able to sell short calls against it or covered calls or front ratio call spreads like I'm talking about here, that lowers what we overall paid for it, all right? And also gives us a uh, better upside if the market were to move there. Okay, does that kind of answer your question in a very long way? <laughs> All right, so, but make sure we're doing this for a credit because if you're adding risk to a long call spread, then we need to be rewarded for that. But to answer James's question, no, it doesn't have to be um, implemented as just a covered call strategy. It's just that with this course in particular, I kind of want to focus on that aspect of it for uh, for a different reason, uh, for you know, for a different reason other than just taking a speculative trade. But yes, you can make definitely do this on a spec. Um, you know, like for instance, right now, if you thought the market was going to go up and you you wanted to do SPY and thought you know, I think it's going to go up a little bit. I don't think we're going to get all the way to the all time highs. Um, the, but I, I want to capture some of this upside. Having said that, I'm worried about, you know, next week and what might happen with all of this stuff. And maybe the picture isn't so rosy and we get a correction. Well, you still get to keep that credit, uh, even though you were directionally wrong, right? Because you're collecting a credit. And if the market goes down, you get to keep that credit. If you're directionally right um, and the market moves up, you know, you have a wide berth in order uh, to be wrong with this strategy. And I'll talk about that here in just a second. All right, so let's talk about that. 
your max profit is that short strike minus long strike plus the net credit, right? So basically, it's the width of the spread. So we're talking about the width of the spread here. It's the width of the spread plus your credit. Because I said, don't do this without doing it for a credit, you guys. If you're doing it for a debit, you know, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. So it's the width of the spread. So, um, you know, it could be like if it's a $5 wide spread, let's just say the short strike is the 105s, right? And the long strike is the 100s. Well, it's the width of the spread plus the credit. And let's just say uh, with the credit, we're going to collect about 65 cents or something like that, right? So our max profit is if the underlying was pinned at expiration. So this is always considered to be at expiration. I knew I was going to run expiry. All right. So at expiration, you know, it would have to be at one, um, probably 104.99. All right. In order for this, because you want the short call to expire worthless, um, you would get the entire width of the spread, the $5 plus that 65 cents. So, you know, in this case, it would be $5 and 65 cents that you would ultimately have, right? Uh, I have different rules for if you're doing this for a trade, James, that I'll talk about here. Um, as we go along, I'll, I'll talk about some exit strategies here uh, and I'll include that as well. But that is, you know, quote unquote, your max profit. Now, keep in mind, if you don't have the underlying, what James was talking about, um, then, you know, if you just built this out as this, spread as a, uh, you know, buying one call, selling two calls short, well, your max loss actually could be infinite, right? Because the stock could continue to go. If you have that underlying to get called away, you know, if I own the underlying, that short call is, is basically just part of the spread, right? If I'm long the underlying, if I'm long um, X, Y, Z in my portfolio, X, Y, Z, that's a fun Y, huh? If I'm long X, Y, Z, right, a um, hundred times, if I'm just long a hundred of these, uh, and then I buy a call, right? So that's my upside, and I sell two calls, uh, sell two calls against it, buy one call, let's just say. Now, this extra short call, is actually covered by that. So you have a really wide spread then, all right? Or or that's part of your spread. Does that make sense? So if XYZ, you know, if you bought XYZ and you're long that at, you know, 110, just know that you're gonna be um, covering this short call at 105 in my example from before, right? At one short call at 105, well, that may seem like you're losing money $5 because this call, you know, if this call is short at the 105, right? You got long this call at the uh, 100 and you are already long at 110. Well, remember what I talked about with this max profit. Your max profit is when it's at the short strike, right? 105. So you're going to make up that difference. $5. Well, that $5 puts our break even because our break even, we get the width of the spread, the short strike plus the width of the spread, which we talked about this, that short strike is the 105s, right? In my example, the width of the spread is $5. And then our match profit, I said, you know, and I'm just pulling out of thin air, 60 cents, I think I was saying it was. So your break even is when it's trading, you know, 110.60 on this spread. All right, so it gives you that wiggle room. You're getting the width of the spread because think about it. If you're long a call at 100, well, it goes up to the short call, well, short two calls, but at 105, right? So as the market trails up from 100 to 105, well, that width of the spread, that width of the spread you gained in value. Now the market continues up to 110. Well, this width of the spread, right, 
you got the max coming in right there. And then your strategy premiums start to go down as we uptick there. All right. That makes sense. Hope I didn't lose everybody there. But that's why your max, your break even is so much higher. Right. And this is actually interesting enough. The way I have this set up and have designed this strategy is that it gets us our break even where it is at basically one standard deviation move and one standard deviation move when we talk about the bell curve and we'll talk about it a little bit more you know that's your bell curve and basically you know this is your one standard deviation move here which it, it coincides with like a 16 delta um and here i have the example of what i'm looking at with my strategy so I'm long EA Sports from selling puts, and I actually got good strike locations at this point. Not to say that it didn't go against me, but at this point, it's made a really nice move, right? So here, I'll pull up a chart real quick. Um, let me get my chart up. I see a couple of questions popping up there. I'm going to try and get them here in a second, but let me throw out this chart real quick. Um, let's just go to EA Sports. All right, so EA Sports. You can see it's had a really nice move, all right, to the upside from where I've gotten in, all right, which is down here. I actually took some heat on it also. The market went against me. Uh, my whole theory was everybody's at home. All these kids are playing sports. EA Sports is going to be doing great. As a matter of fact, there was some professional athlete that said his kid spent $16,000 on Fortnite. He went to the store and used his credit card and he got denied because his kids were racking it up on the Fortnite for buying all the extra stuff on it. $16,000. All right. So, um, so the upside is good here, right? Well, look, we're very close to the highs. I mean, with all the stuff that's going on, the economy shut down. I mean, I think I would be pretty happy with selling out of uh, some of my electronic arts at the all time high. Right. So that's what I'm thinking. I want to hold on to some of them. And I would also say with this, you know, if you're long 100 of the underlying, there's there's no bones about it with this. You guys, you're going to be basically doing a covered call on all of them. Um, you know, if you have another amount, let's say it's 300 or 500 or 1000, I would I would probably, you know, look to cover half or less. OK, I'm never looking to cover all of them. Um, necessarily, because if I'm looking to cover all of them, you guys, I'd almost, to me, that tells me I, I just need to get out of the the uh, the longs in my portfolio, right? Because then, I'm, it, in a sense, to me, it, it makes it feel like, well, I'm no longer bullish in this underlying, so why am I even owning it, right? Your gut's telling you that. Um, so, to me, I would love to, I, I would be more than happy to cover some of my EA Sports at the high all right so that's how i came up with uh this theory in and around this let's say so having said that what i'm doing is buying this just slightly out of the money option all right and obviously prices have changed since uh the end of the day as a matter of fact it looks like you know from looking at the chart it sold off by a couple of dollars the reason why i took a snapshot of this during open market operations is because uh you know after the close, these markets get really wanky because everybody's canceling them, especially because JQ reminded me on, thankfully I did this because on a uh, holiday weekend or an extended weekend, there's no orders being left in there, you guys. Nobody's wanting to take that risk over the weekend, right? Uh, that we open up uh, and all of a sudden something's changed. So in order to have like generally realistic markets, um, I did this snapshot during during the day. So in that, I picked those just out of the money calls, right? Uh, the 110s and then selling the 115s. Now that seems like it's very close. High probabilities, if you know anything about Delta, it tells you the probabilities of being in the money by one penny at expiration, right? So the 115 calls have a 31% chance of trading at 115.01 in the next uh or and closing there on may 15th okay 
So I do have a high probability of it being in the money. Or it's not a high probability. It's a, a third of, um, you know, it's 33% basically. So, you know, uh, probabilities are still in my favor. It won't. So I'll be able to collect this 61 cent credit. So wherever I bought this underlying, I can rest assured if the market goes back down, I've lowered my overall credit on these underlines by 61 cents. Now, because I own more than just one lot um, or a hundred contracts, you know, I've got to divide that amongst the, the ones I'm long, but you know, that's, that's a little bit more highbrow, but um, I am lowering my overall cost basis by collecting this credit. And if the market goes up to 115, that was that high we were looking at. I'd, I'd be happy, like I said, to get out of um, some underlines on that high. And in the meantime, I'm capturing more of the upside. But we've had this great move, you're saying, right? And that's, you know, the the angel and the devil on your shoulder, right? One, one saying, oh, yeah, we're going to go up and trade that, you know, upside. I'm going to get out of some of these at 115. I want to capture some more. We've had this great move. But then on the other side of your shoulder, it's saying, yeah, but this thing could go down, right? And it could have a little bit of a correction. Well, in the meantime, I'm collecting a credit. So, you know, to me, it's like, all right, well, I'm lowering my overall risk then um, on this trade if it goes against me. I'm, I'm staying mechanical. I'm staying diligent with this trade. I'm lowering what I paid for it all the time. So all of those things coming together, that's why it's the perfect storm for me to think about electrical electronic arts uh, for this underlying I am. So now let's think about this again. Well, we talked about the Delta, right? We've talked about the Delta and the probabilities and all of that stuff. Well, we've got this $10 wide, right? So my spread, um, I make money all the way up to those all-time highs. Well, the other side of it is I'm covered to this strike location, right? Or or 120, I, or, or when the underlying is trading 120 on this spread. Because it's five dollars wide, and we talked about the break even, it's the width of the spread plus the credit. So I'm covered to at least 120. Well, here's our probabilities of success uh, uh, of that happening. It's only 17 percent chance. And that's where I said our risk is covered the way I built this strategy out to that one standard deviation, which is only a 16 percent probability. That's pretty good odds in my favor, all right? I've got a lot of wiggle room, $5 above the 52 week high, all right? So a lot of things going for this strategy if I can implement it around my underlying here, okay? All right, I'm gonna take a second to answer a couple of these questions. Let me back up a little bit. Uh, I'm doing a ratio call spread with a credit only. Yes, buy more call and sell less with the ratio. No, see right here? Uh, and yeah, this might have answered your question because I saw your uh, question come up a little bit earlier. So I and I kept talking, but um, I didn't realize that's what you're going to say. So we're buying one. This is the one we're buying right here. We're buying the at the money, and then we're selling two of those. All right, we're selling two of the 15s. So that extra call we're selling at you know two dollars and sixty cents or something. That extra call pays for the spread. Does that make sense? Uh, I'll try and do this on the analyzed tab in a second. Okay. Uh, how do you decide on the expiration? Great question, James. And I'm, I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm, let me go through these here and we will talk about a few of those things. Now, picking the right underline. One of the things with EA Sports and all of the markets right now, it's all about volume and open interest, okay? So my rule of thumb for the stock that's trading, if it's a stock that's greater than $100, or actually less than $100, it needs to be uh, less than or equal to about 10 cents wide uh, on the bid offer of these options that are just out of the money uh, during open market operations, okay? And that is a total green light. 
if you're used to trading a certain stock and it doesn't fit that parameter, but you're used to trading it, then, you know, I would just say, think about that as being a yellow light. You get too many yellow lights throughout this strategy, um, then, or red lights. If you get any red lights, then you're just out of it. Like for instance, if you built a strategy and it was a debit, that was in a red light immediately. I need to change strikes or uh, pick a different strategy. Maybe just it's a long call spread. Uh, if it's uh, greater than $100, like we have here, then my deal is you just move the decimal three ticks to the left right there. And so I would say it needs to be uh, less than or equal to about 11 cents. Now you can see here with EA Sports, it doesn't fit my rule here, all right? And it almost really doesn't usually fit the rule here, but I like EA Sports, so I gave up. I really wanted to get into this trade. Um, so for, because of my theory, so I, I bent a rule there and I have no problem with you guys bending some of these rules. Just there's some of them, like, especially this one, uh, don't bend that rule. Do not do it for a debit. Okay. If, like I said, nothing else, you walk away from this strategy. Just don't do the strategy for a debit. You just, anytime you're increasing your risk, you need to be, uh, compensated for that. And that's part of this. Plus the way I built it out, you know. You're, you're getting really good probabilities of success or at least a scratch. And for me, if you get a scratch, that's a win, all right? Um, how do I pick the expiration? Well, anytime we're doing something for a credit, James, I want to exploit theta, all right? So theta is uh, the best at around 35, 36 days to expiration. So that is why I'm picking this one. Uh, usually if I'm doing like just the long call spread, right? I would want to minimize this theta so I wouldn't pick this particular expiration, all right? So I'd go further out in time or something uh, because theta affects the closer duration. Theta is the thief in the night. And I, I keep getting ahead of myself on some of my things, but um, Picking the right underline. Let's talk about this one for a second. So that's the rule. So like if it's a two hundred and fifty dollars stock, right, right, two dollars and fifty dollars and blah 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 cents, whatever. I take the decimal here, one, two, three, and I should be looking at something like twenty five cents to the bid offer. So um, in that we can pull up. I took a snapshot of this one also because the markets, I had a feeling would change at the end of the day. So we're looking at Apple right here, right? So let's pull up my red pin and keep it there. Uh, I don't think I can change it. So again, Apple, $268 stock, move the decimal three cents. So we are looking at uh, 27 cents, right? To the bid offer. So we go down here on the closest expiration, the monthly closest expiration. You know, this is eight, that is a monthly closest to expiration. I get it. It's only eight days. Eyeball, you really want to go to where uh, the eyeballs are, all right? So when you got the eyeballs looking down there, um, you know, yeah. So the eyeballs, all the traders are watching these markets. So we're looking at all of the ones that are just out of the money, um, you know, because further in the money, it's not going to fit that rule for sure. And we should be seeing these markets somewhere around 20 seven cents to the bid offer. So you can see something like Apple obviously has that. And the reason why is because it's free market price discovery in full swing, you guys. It means, you know, like if you wanted to get out of some of your calls or puts or whatever, um, and somebody came in and put in an offer or a bid, uh, you know, got bettered the market from where you are, well, you might be like, I want to get on the market. So you better your market. And then the guy that's on the other side of it, he wants to, he thinks you're coming in close. So we're going to make up and we're going to start meeting in the middle. You know, it's kind of like you're haggling. Uh, if you're finding markets that aren't really fitting this rule, for one, right now we have extreme volatility, right? So there's a lot of risk in there and the market makers aren't willing to make tight markets because they have to offset their risk and they have to go somewhere else. Uh, to offset that risk. And in those matter of moments, they know that their profit could be eaten up, you know? So they're gonna make a little bit wider markets in order to offset some of that risk, okay? 
So uh, you'll see this, you know, because usually uh, in the past we've seen Apple where it's, you know, maybe a nickel wide across the board uh, and have really tight markets. So follow this rule. It is a loosely held rule, especially right now. Right now, sometimes you're going to have to be like it's two times that uh, the rule that Wolfman's come up with, okay, because volatility is so high. And that might be, um, you know, a, the yellow light extreme, right? If it gets much wider than the two times uh, what my rule is, then that starts becoming a red light, let's say, okay? Because there's nobody in there. There's You're going to end up giving up too much edge to get in and too much edge to get out. And if, um, that eats into your profitability, all right? All right, so that's picking the right underline. Um, next thing we need to look at when we, we've come up with this assumption in our underlying, right? So picking the right environment. And James, I will, uh, is it generally safe to assume that you would get filled at the mid on the bid ask? That's actually a great question. So like um, on that one, uh, let me see if I can find it. So this one, I probably just have it uh, set up as very close to the mid market because I just pulled it up and uh, tried to get this snapshot relatively in a quick fashion. But one of the things I would say, especially in these markets, you can see the natural is basically a debit because some of the markets are getting really wanky right now. Um, there are better markets than what you're even seeing here, right? Rest assured, because you know, somebody has April on right now and they don't want to take it into expiration. So they've got an April, May spread on to roll it out to May, right? So in that, one of these, like, let's just say this bid, it, I'm willing to bid this to sell those April or vice versa. I'm willing to sell these uh, 115 calls because I'm my auto legger, which is your computer, you know, when it's trying to set up this spread, uh, it's willing to auto leg it. It's willing to buy here. It'll lean buy here to sell those, all right? Or, or in my case, sell these to buy these, all right? The computer will do that automatically. So there's people trying to get out of April and into May. Now, May is going to be represented by the April, okay? The computer will show that. Uh, it'll just show a bid because it says, I'm right here. I know I can hit that market and auto leg it in a nanosecond. But when you go further out or, you know, maybe somebody has the uh, April April on, right? They're trying to leg that. And then somebody else has the May, April spread. Well, when it starts getting a little bit more convoluted like that, a computer will not lean on a leaning market, okay? So if this uh, person was trying to lean on, or this, this market was leaning on this April, uh, the June uh, or the next uh, monthly expiration will not show, if somebody has a spread, will not show a bid or an offer leaning on my 123 bid for the April May, okay? So if somebody has an April May spread on and one of these markets is leaning, like it's gonna, bang, hit it. Well, the further out you go, the markets are going to seem a little wider, but there's, there's, there's guys in the weeds is what we used to call them. They're in the weeds because unless they know they can hit that uh, lean, they're not going to represent it. But if you came in and just bid for it and it can just be like, bang, bang, it's going to do it. So that's why sometimes when you go like mid market, also you just see, whack, you get hit. They're like, oh, geez, what just happened? How did I get that? Did I do something wrong? Am I looking at something different? Well, no, it's because there's all kinds of spread spreading mechanisms going on in there, and and they know that the computer knows it can just do it, bang, bang, okay? And the other thing is, sometimes you can bid through where that, that guy is in the weeds, believe it or not. That can definitely happen. I've seen it I've, on the floor many times. Um, I don't see it as much on, um, on on the computer these days because it's just too hard to have so many windows open. But when when you are specifically looking at like Fed funds, I would see that stuff happen all the time. Um, so 
what I'm trying to get at here with a credit on this, I wouldn't always necessarily go mid-market. This is a very long explanation for, for this, James, and I'm sorry. So with these, especially in these markets, I would always start out, if I'm trying to sell it for a credit, start out a little bit higher. Like I might start out at trying to get 65 cents. Now I'm not saying stay in there for like 15, 20 minutes and wait for that 65 cents necessarily. You know, do you want the penny or do you want the trade? That's what you gotta ask yourself. And I want the trade. So I would put it in at 65 cents, hit confirm, hit confirm and send. And then I'd go back over to my uh, trading uh, montage, and then I would cancel, replace, you know, change my price now, I cancel, replace, and I go to probably like 63 cents. You know, confirm, send, the amount of time it takes me to get over there, hit the button, cancel, replace, I go to like 61 cents, okay? So that's, that's true price discovery, right? You're creating that free market, price discovery. That's how I would suggest doing that. And vice versa, if you're doing it from a debit spread um, on a different strategy, then, um, you know, same thing, get away from the mid market and then start bidding it up slowly. Give those algos a, a chance to, uh, to auto leg for you. Okay. So good question. Trevor's all over. He's like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. Uh, Slide. What kind of environment do we want? We want implied volatility, IV percent, right? All right, to be high. We want it to be uh, greater than 50%, right? Greater than 50%, why? Because we're doing this as a credit spread, right? And we're collecting a credit. So we want prices to be really high. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to pull up my other one. Uh, Hopefully implied volatility percent is still high on uh, my EA sports. So here is implied volatility. You can see it right here. It's trading right around 47. Now, when I say higher than 50%, you know, implied volatility, if it were a percent, you multiply it by a hundred, right? And you come up with 47. No, not necessarily. What I'm talking about implied volatility percent, I'm saying where implied volatility is now in relation to where it's been in the past. So we want it to be above the mid range here. You know, and we've had some extreme volatility happen recently. That is a black swanish event, right? I don't know, I don't know if the um, uh, VIX, you know, 50 is the new 20, but um, you know, we'll have to we'll have to play that as it goes. If we start coming back into normalized areas, we might have to discount that. So it's really important to know what how to come up with implied volatility percent is. So in that, what we do is we take we take the current IV, right? Current implied volatility, which was that number forty seven in my example, and we subtract that by the low IV, right? And then we take that sum and we divide it by the high IV. minus the low IV, all right? So what we're trying to do here is figure out where the current implied volatility is because implied volatility is forward looking. I always say, you know, forward looking is better. Um, I also say volatility is always overstated, you know, so because fear is irrational. Um, so anytime you get irrational, which is, you know, upwards above 50, that, I think that starts getting a little irrational. Doesn't mean it can't go higher, but we're just trying to get ourselves set up for success here, all right? We're trying to put ourselves in a situation where we are more likely to be successful. And with premiums at their highest, when implied volatility or Vega is at its highest, that's when we need to be thinking about uh, collecting a credit, right? Taking the other side that fear. Just like when everybody is complacent, that's the time to take advantage of low premiums, all right? Increases your probabilities of success and gets the ball rolling in your favor. You know, you're turning the tables on everybody, all right? So in this uh, example, gotta go back over to 
implied volatility here. So uh, what we can look at here is the line here. We've got 87, 47, and what's the low here? Uh, is that about the low? You can put on my glass. I think that's about the low right there. 25. So 87, uh, 47, and 25 are all our numbers we need to know. So 47, 25, right? That sum divided by 87 minus 25, right? So basically we've got 22 divided by uh, 52. So right now, uh, this is very close. It was actually above 50% right now. So I'd have to pull up my calculator right now. I think um, we've got to be somewhere around 47% or something. Somebody else got a calculator real quick. Um, so we got uh, 22 divided by 57.42. Somebody threw it out there before I did. 42%, okay? So it's a little bit low um, for my general rule. Now, like I said, there was a massive uh, line in this. So you can see that we are really currently out of where it normally was really high. So we knew we know we have some pretty high premiums in here. Um, so, but it wouldn't necessarily fit my rule, especially if you have a lower risk tolerance. Um, you know, if if you think that we're starting to get back into normal normalization, uh, this would be considered high applied volatility for itself uh, if you discount some of the things that we just saw. Um, so you're still getting pretty decent premiums for even probably if I go to the uh, 20 year, let's go to the 20 year. So you can see that relatively high area for the last several years. This isn't all 20 years, but you can see that is a long representation. And so um, you could consider that as being pretty darn high for um, Oh, Lester, 62. Sorry. Uh, you're right. Lester called me out of my math. Uh, you're right. This should have been 62. Which puts that at about 30-something, doesn't it? Off of those highs. Do the math real quick. 22 divided by 62 has got to be like 30-some percent. 35%. Yeah, so that's about 35%. So that's a little bit low, um, you know, for general rules of thumb, picking the right environment though, all right? We don't care about the VIX. VIX isn't telling us anything about the specific underlying we're looking at, all right? We want to be looking at the environment of X, Y, Z, or, you know, or in my case, I was looking at EA Sports, right? Um, and we probably could look at that EA Sports again and see that it, the volatility came off even quite a bit today because it was it was above 50 when I was doing this, when I was betting it. All right, so picking the right duration. 35 days to expiration is what we're looking for or as close to 35 days to expiration as we can. Um, you guys have asked a lot of good questions. We're going a little long. Why? Because of that theta component. This is a... Pretty good representation of what we're looking at for the calls and puts. 35 days to expiration, you can see theta, that thief in the night that comes and steals our premium gets really aggressive, all right? We get a 50% drop in those premiums in those 35 days. Remember, we're selling an extra call against it, so we want that to happen. Um, we don't want theta to be held on. We wanna get out of this trade as much as possible. A lot of times with High implied volatility, and we see that volatility coming out, it has a tendency to kind of hold up or it feels like a balloon pumping out on uh, the premiums. And then we get that massive drop down when all the volatility comes out, it catches up with theta uh, and we get paid off relatively quickly. So good time to get in this is when volatility is at its highest because those premiums, if we're just talking premiums here, uh, we got vol added into this graph it kind of makes that those premiums go higher. And then when that volatility comes out because it's overstated, it comes out really quickly, all right? 
So we want high implied volatility because it pumps up those premiums. We want to capture that theta decay, that thief in the night that comes and steals our premiums. And picking the right strike location, a loop, you know, my rule of thumb is make sure you get a credit. Make it a credit. All right. Make it a credit. But basically, we're going to be looking at, um, you know, if it's less than, it's hard to do this strategy with stocks that are less than $50. But if it is less than $50, you're going to be looking at 50 cent wide uh, spread, right? If it's basically 50 to $100, uh, it's going to be closer to, you know, a dollar wide, a dollar to that $2 and 50 cent wide, right? And if it's greater than a hundred dollar stock, then we're looking at $5 wide uh, spreads. Okay. You know, you're going to get the best credit for the, the $100, but obviously, you know, you got more risk if this underlying starts cruising against you. Now, remember, I talked about the, uh, the strike locations, right? Well, if we take this, and here's one standard deviation on the put side. And if we look at the one standard deviation on the calls, and these are the puts, well, you can, if you add up the nine, the four, the one, the five, and the one, all of that is going to end up being very close to 16%. So that equals the 16 delta, right? Because if there's a 16 prob a 16 percent probability of this happening, right? Which is what the uh, standard deviation curve tells us is if we start out at zero and the standard deviation curve tells us this is a 16 percent probability of happening. Well, that's what's equivalent to the delta, right? 16 delta is a 16% chance that it'll finish one cent in the money. Well, that's that's your standard deviation, one standard deviation. And there is well, then an 84% probability of all of this happening, which is why this call spread's great, right? We put that call spread in kind of right around in here, right, where, um, you know, we bought a call kind of right around in here, maybe, probably closer to here somewhere. And then we're selling, you know, a call that's kind of, we're selling two calls. Oops, sell two calls there. We're buying a call there. Well, and then we're getting that break even to be right in here, right? That's that's our ultimate goal is this is where our break even is. Pretty good probabilities of us kind of being able to work that out, right? And if, and if we're right and the market, you know, goes in between here on the upside, if we start getting that jump to there, well, that's where we get our cash. So when I say neutral, you know, you don't care if the underlying just trades right around in here and starts trickling downhill or whatever, however you want to chart that out, if it starts going down there, remember, I got to keep that 60 cents. You know, if it nailed right at my break even, well, I got that $5. Um, I actually, I got to keep the 60 cents if it's right at my break even. Um, and if it goes to where my short strikes are, well, I got the width of the spread. You know, And if you guys, it starts going up like this and I'm long that underlying, well, I did get called out of those there. Right, I got the uh, long that I had in my account called away from me here, but I made the width of that spread, so that helped me out. Right, I I gained an extra five dollars because I still get to keep the credit, the sixty cents because I did it as a credit spread. I get to keep that sixty cents and I get to keep the five dollar wide spread. So I made five extra dollars on this, right? Well, I said the current market with large price swings, does this deviation uh, strike reflect the option? Yes, that's the beauty and volatility. So I, uh, I look at like, this is a normal bell curve, right? Sometimes you'll see skew where it'll go like, that's not a very good skew. Um, you'll see the market kind of go like this, all right? That's, you know, skew to the call side. Skew to the put side would kind of look like this and then kind of go like that, right? That'd be skewed to the put side. 
Well, what volatility does to all of these is it makes the standard deviation curve kind of go. So it's a lot flatter than this uh, right here. So you can think about volatility. Oops, volatility is like a, a wave or a, a bucket. And when volatility is really high in that bucket, right, it squishes, puts pressure down on the curve. It squishes it out, it flattens the curve if everybody's talking about, right? We're trying to flatten the curve, all right? Well, when volatility, we look at volatility in this bucket and it's really low, well, my belt curve is gonna, gonna look like that. You know, much steeper, okay? that help? Volatility to put side usually means that, you know, everybody's fearful of the downside and they go out there and they buy puts and they're not even caring what they're paying for it. They're just, give me, give me, I'm getting my belly, right? They're just buying these puts up and they're just paying up for it. They don't care what they're paying for it. They're so scared. They're just like, it's like a toilet paper run, you know? I don't care that I'm buying six years worth of toilet paper right now. There's a pandemic going on. You know, they aren't thinking logically. So that's when you come in there and you're like, hey, I'll give you this toilet paper for $500. And that's what you're doing with options. Yeah, dude, I get it, man. It's scary out there. I'll sell them to you. Uh, yes, risk profile diagram. Yes, I will get to that before we get turned on. Let me get the exit strategy real quick. Then we'll get on to those examples because I'm sure some people are like, dude, this guy talks forever. All right, risk. Now, if you're doing this covered against your underlying, the coverage call strategy, I would just leave it. I'd let it get called away from me, especially in my EA thing. You know, my thought is that I go up to the 52 week highs. I want to get out of some of those right now. All right. Um, you know, one thing to note, I wouldn't, I'm probably not going to implement this strategy right now because we have earnings coming up. I've taken this risk on this trade for so long. I'm riding it into the earnings. I'm still bullish on them. Um, so in that, you know, my hypothetical scenario I've been giving you the entire time, I'm not going to try and implement this strategy around an earnings event. And I have earnings coming up in the, uh, the May contract. So I'm not actually going to do this uh, on Monday when we come back. Usually I implement the strategy I talked so much about during this. Uh, the next day, this one, I'm not going to because we have earnings. I wouldn't do this. Um, this much um, ahead, or I wouldn't try and cover my underlying around earnings for this. I have specific rules to uh, trade these type of strategies for earnings that doesn't fall in line with our timing right now. So uh, that's a different one. You know, like I said, watch this again. You could go and watch the earnings, uh, the ratio call spread for earnings. All right, so once this, our exit strategy, if you don't have the underlying then, I would be looking at 30 to 50% of max profit, all right? So in our example, we had $5.60 credit, right? I'd be looking to get out of this when we're looking at uh, $2.80, okay? Um, if you're doing this as, you know, the covered call strategy, collect that credit, I want a little bit of upside, lower my overall cost basis, uh, this rule would not then apply, okay? Uh, I'm going to probably look to get some of those called away from me, lighten up some of my load and move on. You know, I've made a nice move with that trade. I'm I'm looking to get in and out of these. This isn't something that uh, I necessarily want my portfolio for the rest of my life. If I did, I'd probably put it in my IRA or my Roth. Okay. So uh, I see another question coming up. So while I pull up the platform, I'm going to try and answer this question as well. Let me get up my, let's see if I, just go to that Apple trade. Or let's just do it in Apple for that matter. All right, so let's do it in Apple. What was your question? Uh, do you add a stop loss just in case uh, it uh, reverses on you? Um, uh, do I add a stop? You can't add a stop loss. on. Are you talking about a uh, stop loss on my underlying that I have? Like add a stop for that underlying? I, d I don't usually, my, I'm on the markets every day, so I don't, I don't agree with stop uh, losses. I would rather go out and buy a put. 
No, on this one, I mean, if you, you're, with this one, uh, when you're doing short calls uh, and you aren't doing this against an underlying and you're doing this as a trade, you're going to take that uh, 30 to 50 percent of max profit. Then, no, you need to you need to go in there and execute it yourself. There's no real way to put in a stop loss on uh, a option strategy. All right. Do you have any other video examples of these strategies I can watch? Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to I'll give you a, a link to that here in a second. Uh, I joined late. What happens? Uh, to the one short that goes in the money, do you buy it back or roll it out? I, I would, uh, you know, depending on your risk parameters. Now, if you are going up there and it hits that short call, you are very likely uh, looking at, at a good credit. I mean, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, you're looking at a pretty good winner because remember, you're long an option that is going to gain in value. So if it starts to happen and it goes up close to your short stock and you don't or you're short and you don't have um the underlying then i'm sorry i'm trying to use my mouse and my pen i have a pen tab and it's driving my thing crazy uh if you're doing it as a strategy this is where you're going to look to get out and if you're directionally right you should be able to get out for at least 30 to 50 percent 50 percent is for the guys that are higher risk tolerant 30 percent if you're newer to options trading is the way i would look all right, so let's look at a uh, $200 stock. You know, it's probably going to be 50 cent wide is what I'm going to be able to go, or uh, 50 cents. It's probably going to be closer to um, being able to uh, do this as a uh, $10 wide. Okay, so let's check out the $10 wide first to see if we can get it that wide. Oh, I don't want to go that far in the money. I want to do this 70s, and then I'm going to sell. Get this down to a one lot so we can do the correct risk parameters on this. Uh, go $10 here, uh, right? $10, I'm going to sell that one. Oh, Eric, I'm going to buy this one. Fine, I'll just do it this way. So 20. All right, so let's get this down to reasonable numbers. Belden, please. All right. Um, all right. So able to get this done as a credit. That's a nice credit. Uh, $10 wide, especially on a $10 wide one. Now think about it. So I, my break even is now at 290, uh, 277. So 292. Uh, so not quite that uh, as high as I wanted. I'd like, to, I'd like to try and build it so I can get it up to that. Uh, one standard deviation move. So let's just take a look at this, see if I can sell two of those, see, get a credit. So there you go. That's probably the one I would do because now I'm at $95. And that puts me just outside that 19%. That's going to be pretty close to that one standard deviation move, which is, you know, a good scenario for me. All right. So I know everybody's like, I, it's a Friday for me. You guys should check out my, uh, I think, throughout my quarantine chemistry uh, joke on Twitter. It's kind of funny um, and it's not advice. Uh, but anyway, so let's take a look at this on the analyze tab, go over to the analyze the trade and you can see that how the analyze works. I have no break even to the downside, right? Why? Because if it goes down there, I get to keep that credit. If I'm directionally wrong, Here's here's the even line of delineation where I make zero money. Well, to the downside, it is all mine. I get to keep it. I don't, and this does not include the underlying stock, right? This is just it without it. You know, if you have the underlying stock, it's going to hurt you. That's specifically on the front ratio spread. Um. And then to the upside, you can see here, what did I say? This is the width of the spread. Uh, it's $10. So 195 plus, or sorry, 295 plus 142. You can see if we line this up, it should equal 196.42. If I can get it on there, I'm trying to move it really slow. It's not letting me do it, but that's the real break even. Okay.
Uh, do you use Delta for your entries and exits? For this one, I'm looking at getting out. If it goes up there and starts hitting that short strike, okay? That's where I know, especially in, in this one where I've gotten even a little further out of the money on this one, uh, that I know if it gets up there to 185, that's where I'm going to look to get out of this because I know that my premiums are going to have increased. This one's going to increase. This one's also going to increase. But I get up to that uh, short strike. I'm going to have captured most of that upside. It's not going to be the full amount. You know, we said the max profit is uh, if the underlying is trading at 185, but that's at expiration. That's with both of these short calls expiring worthless. Well, they aren't gonna be worthless if it happens, uh, you know, during the duration of this option, right? In the next 15 days, they aren't gonna be worthless. But, um, you know, that long call is gonna help us on the way up. Now, if you put this trade on and tomorrow it happened, uh, you might not uh, get even 30% of it if it happens in like a day. Okay, so again, I'd probably just then look to cover it immediately. Uh, the margin on this, um, it you know, it's obviously a lot less if you own the underlying, but uh, uh, let's say copy trade. What does that do? Well, let's just go back to the thing. The uh, margin on this is I forgot to check this. Uh, for this one, ten dollars wide, it's four thousand. So that's not bad. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? So somebody was asking about this. This is the deal for the. Uh, ProTraderStrategies.com. I'll throw this over there in the link for you guys so you guys can take advantage of that. Just That's a hot link over there in the chat window. We've been going back and forth in the uh, questions box. Chat window has the link to this. It should pull it right up. Uh, I have this on, um, on uh, my PowerPoint here. But basically, if you guys take advantage of this, you get unlimited access to me, which is not listed here. You can write, read out, reach out to me. I'm going to be your mentor through all of this. If you have any questions, I can answer you, uh, you know, how I would do it. I can't give you any investment advice. Um, not a financial advisor. Also, you get all my daily market commentaries where I talk about every single trade I do. These are every single day I do market commentaries that were open. Um, also, all kinds of other content, uh, priority access to the webinars, um, uh, and all of these web. So if you're newer to options trading, you can go through these. Uh, yes, you are going to say, you know, I, I went through buying calls or long call strategy. Well, keep in mind, just like this, I'm talking about specifically about the ratio call spread. Okay, you might be able to find the ratio call spread. Um, or the call ratio spread in here somewhere where I'm talking about taking advantage, like uh, here it is, you know, for more advanced traders. You now, if you are doing this as a covered call strategy, I wouldn't necessarily say it would be for advanced traders, uh, but you could also find it in the volatility uh, section, right? Because there I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about the volatility than what I even talked about in here. Um, and how to implement that around uh, volatile or extreme market conditions. So, you know, we're we're digging into volatility probably even more finite than we did here as well. So you're getting access to all of these webinars. When you go through and you watch one, you know, uh, you get to check it off. So um, there again, we can see some butterflies showing up. Um, so, but they are, they're specific to these different courses that you can add. Um, and if you're watching it on tape delay, you're gonna to have to punch this into your URL down here to take advantage of it. Uh, everybody else can hit it over there in the chat window. All right, so I wanna thank you guys all. I see a couple of questions coming up. I'll get to those uh, later webinars, uh, drill down on different option components when and where I find those appropriate. Again, here is that link. 
Also, if you have any questions, reach out to us at 310-598-6677 or email me at tradingapprotraderstrategies.com. Or if you have an idea on something you want me to uh, do a webinar on, please give us, uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, be more than happy to do that type of content. All right. So take advantage of it. Uh, and um, hold on. It's a new day and age. We've got the disclaimer. Please take a moment to go over this as we are an educational company and nothing here is a solicitation. Blah, blah, blah. Not blah, blah, blah. Please read over it. Um, I'm not a financial advisor or a tax advisor, so please determine this suitability uh, according to your own risk parameters. All right. Alexander, thank you. Appreciate the kind words. And if you can't take that, take it easy. Take care, guys. <laughs> uh, Alexander, reach out to me at the email and uh, we'll talk. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter. Happy Passover to everybody. And take care. Bye for now.